Daddy God, I just want to say thank you for um, bringing us here today. Thank you for another time for us to be able to learn and study in the name of Jesus. I want you to say thank you for this particular topic that would really help us in realizing why we need to defend our faith and to be ourselves to be able to understand what we believe and why we believe what we believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Good morning. Right. Um, it's good to see all of you. It's good to see all of you today. Uh, let's see. So today we're going to be talking about Christian apologetics. But I have to make a confession. So remember, I always say that we use a Sunday school manual. And um, while I was going through, I noticed it earlier on, but I'd hoped that I would be able to find a solution before this um, particular class, but I haven't been able to find the solution yet. So what has happened, today we're talking about Christian apologetics, right? But what has happened is it has there's been a misprint. So the first two topics that we're supposed to do this quarter is cultural Christianity and Christian virtues, but it's not written, it's not here. And I tried to check online, I tried to find other places where it was, where I couldn't find it. So I just moved to the one that was next, which is Christian apologetics. It's very possible that we might bring it back later. And if we do, that's great. If we don't, it's still great. God will still find a way of making everything work together for our good. So yeah. So today we're well, going to be talking about Christian apologetics, right? And um, when when I remember the first time I heard the word apologetics, I was like, I'm not an apologetic. I don't want to apologize for my faith. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever for me to apologize for my faith. But that was not actually what, that's not actually what being an apologetic is. So those are some of the things we're going to be talking about today, about being an apologetic, what it means to be an apologetic, especially a Christian apologetic, and then um, how that affects our lives. So we're going a little bit deeper into um, our understanding of, of, of the word of God about the Bible. Remember, this is adults on this school, so yeah, it's not a... Um, this thing. Ignore my voice. I'm just grateful that I have a voice. We thank God for it. So yeah. So these are the topics we're going to be studying this quarter. Last um quarter we had a lot of interesting two topics like um about lying, lying song, being grateful, the four lepers, um, I think we did foundational truth. Uh those are the things I remember. Let me see if I will go to my modern day idolatry, yes, and all of that. So this is the topic. These are the topics for this this quarter. Um, Christian apologetics, cultural Christianity. I'm going to still mention it just in case. Christian virtues, Christian apologetics, kingdom influencers, Christian and socialization, Christianity, Christianity and socialization, Christianity and governance, perilous times, the second coming of Christ, the great tribulation, millennial reign. The new heaven, new earth. You know, this, those later topics are my thoughts. Those, those are topics I love. I don't understand it, but I love it. <laughs> but I love it. And there's this book that Pastor, um, Pastor Adelie, he wrote and is really, really explains this a, a lot more. So I'm more, I know more about the um second coming of Christ, great relation, the new heaven, the new earth. I don't need to be more now. So yeah, when we get there, uh, I hope my, my learning will not I'll be a proper apologetic. So yeah, so today's memory verse is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, and it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. If you can unmute, then um, please do so that we can um, say the memory verse together. I always believe that is really cool, really good for us to um, say the word of God to, to, to your own hearing. Hmm. But wait, no. Yeah. Okay. So just on me. So yeah. So we're reading from King James Version, and it says, "But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts." 
but sanctify the Lord God in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to every man. Every, and be ready you. always to give, to give an answer to, to every man. That asketh you reason of the hope that is in you. That asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you. With meekness and fear. With meekness, and, meekness fear. and fear. With meekness and fear. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to every man. And be ready always to give an answer to every man. That asketh you a reason. That asketh you a reason. Of the hope that is in you. Of the hope that is in you. With meekness and fear. With meekness and hope. 1 Peter 3.15 one, one the Peter three fifteen. Well done. One Peter three fifteen. Well done. That was good reading. I check again. So why should you give me good chill? <laughs> well, I'm not going to say anything. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm going to read it. Well done. That was actually good reading. I'm going to read it in another um translation just so that we have a little bit of understanding of what we have read. Because when I was going through it, I thought it was um, I thought it was really interesting. So. Um, I'm going to read it in the New, New Living Translation. That's um, 1 Peter 3, verse 15. And it says, in Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. So that's what it says in New Living Translation. Amplified Classic Edition says, But in your heart, set Christ apart as holy and acknowledge him as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you, but do it courteously and respectfully. That is actually very important. So yes, so that's what we're going to be looking at. The Bible person is in June chapter, uh, I said June, Jude chapter three, verse four, and I'll read that. It says, beloved, when I, I, when I give up, I'll leave that one there, and then I'm going to read it in another, a different translation i'm going to read it with the uh, um niv it says dear friends although i was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share i felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to god's holy people for certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you they are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and they just deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. So I'll just go back a little bit to the memory verse again, but it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And one of the things I realized really is the, is the, um, um, the reason why we believe what we believe, you know, so, so when I was um studying this studying this, for this topic, um Christian apologetics, I was just thinking, oh, it's not a big deal knowing as it I know why I believe what I believe, I know what I've experienced, I understand all of that. But when somebody comes to ask you, why are you a Christian? Why do you believe in God? Why is there so much evil in the world? Why is there um they say what kind of God, what kind of loving God? If God really loves, if God loves people, then why will he let people go to hell? Or the kind of question like, no, as in God doesn't really care who you marry, who you love, who you stay, how you, how you, and say, I mean, he has so many other things that he should be taking care of. There's so many, these are questions that have been asked to me personally, not to talk of just generally. Today, today's class is interactive. So I'm going to be asking a lot of questions and I just want us to just talk about the, like our, our our own experiences and how we responded as i'm talking i just remember something that happened and it, it happened to me but maybe i don't know why the one that's coming to me right now is the one that happened to my dad my biological dad and he said when he first became a christian you know that he was so zealous for christ you know he was always when he got on the bus he was always preaching he's one of those people that used to preach in the bus as in don't worry when i was a teenager i was really embarrassed 
<laughs> so if you're a young person, your parents have the other have the license to embarrass you. I think that's one of their jobs. I used to be around like, oh my god, why this person should not do anything? And you just stand up and say, pray the Lord. I'm like, no. <laughs> that's when I was really young. So yeah, that was me. Um, and now I'm likely going to be one of those people that will do that. So I'm like, my dad did it to me. <laughs> you guys should just enjoy it. Enjoy it for now. So yeah, he, he used to preach in the bus. And I remember one time when somebody, I can't remember, probably, I can't remember what kind of, um, um, where the person be, um, came from, as in what beliefs that they came from. But they started to, you know, ask him questions and really attack him. Is uh, this now in hindsight? I know what was what was happening was just an attack of the devil, but at that time I was just thinking, hey, all these questions, why are they embarrassing? As I'm already embarrassed, and now they're further embarrassing my dad because my dad didn't have the answers. So you know, you'll be in the mall where okay, I've seen mall where, but I don't know what it's called, like the big buses, and I don't know what to call it in English. <laughs> So, you know, and the man was now really asking him questions. Like, why would you do the, um, why does this one, this one? Um, you know, at some point, my dad just went quiet. Later on, as in, not at that same period, but later on in life, when I brought it up again, my dad said, he, funny enough, he remembers that one of the few things he remembers, because when you remind him of all the other things that he's done to you, he remind you, he remember. But that one he remembered, he said, you know, he went back and he was like, I didn't have the answers to these questions. But do you know the reason why he didn't have the answers? Because he didn't know. He didn't know that the Bible had answers to these questions. And so many times when he, he gets a new revelation about something that he has just read or something that he has just understood, he would just say, oh, if only I had known then the answers. And that is why, you know, I really, really, in many ways, enjoy Bible study, and I enjoy work our workers' induction and training because it just goes to the fundamental. And that's why me, I always ask questions. I'm always asking questions because that those questions they prepare you for later on in life. There's somebody, in fact, I just remembered he because of the testimony he himself gave. You know, he grew up in church, Noah, Allah, the older Noah. Um, so he grew up in church, and this is what he said. I'm using his own words, and he said, you know, but that when he went to college or when he went to university, that people started asking him questions, and he realized he didn't really know the answers. So, or that amazing question. So sometimes you ask yourself the question. So, and one of the ways those questions come out is through doubts. Um, we always bind the spirit of doubt and everything. But do you know one way that doubt disappears is through knowledge when you know something then you won't doubt it anymore um the way holy spirit help me the, the the way many times doubt that doubt is actually supposed to make you go back to god to ask god god what does this mean i i don't really know if i believe this thing but this is what your word has said show me in your scripture show me why this thing is happening explain to me and we have holy the holy spirit he's 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 the one that is with us now he's everywhere and in us and he is the one that teaches us the bible says that he was when jesus was leaving he said that i'm going to send someone to you and that person the holy spirit is not a force it's not an energy those are the kind of things you know if you study the word he is a person he has feelings you can actually hurt the word of god says do not grieve the holy spirit you can actually hurt the holy spirit and you know one of the ways you hurt we hurt the holy spirit it's when you deny christ i just remember one time i heard the holy spirit and i'm really grateful because i know he's forgiving me but it's so easy for you and he doesn't he doesn't strive the word strive is he doesn't force his way you know sometimes we we just decide that this is how I want to do it. I don't care what the consequences are. And the Holy Spirit will be like, ah, oh. and he'll just leave you. He'll just be like, okay, it's all right. I've told you, I've warned you, but you have chosen not to listen. So, you know, I've gone in many di directions, but I want to come back to Noah like, because one of the things he said was when he got, um, he started asking, they start asking him questions. It made him go back to actually go and find out what he actually believes. So today, that's what we're talking about. Why do you believe what you believe? That's the question we're asking. Why do you believe what you believe? It does, you ha we have to understand why we believe it. We have to believe God for ourselves. We have to know 
God for ourselves and how we know God for ourselves is by studying the word of God, not just reading it, but studying. There's a difference. Who can tell me what the difference is between reading and studying? What does, what's the difference? What comes to your mind when you think about reading and studying? Reading and studying the word of God. You can type it, you can unmute, you're not stopping my flow, you're not going to be disrupt, disrupting the class or whatever. So, yeah, go uh, for it. Sir, Kem, sir, Kem, yeah. A clear example A clear example is when somebody asks to uh, read out a particular passage of the Bible and you read it out. And uh, when somebody's preaching or somebody's trying to lead uh, maybe an exhortation, says, can somebody read out a particular um, chapter and verse? You read it out. But when you study, you take time to, to you know, go over and over that particular verse yourself. You write down. You 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 stay mute. You you meditate um, to get the revelation behind what that particular verse is saying. Um, I don't know if I've um, differentiated it that clearly enough. That was very good. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Fusha. And thank you so much for speaking. I don't think you've ever spoken in my class ever. So I'm going to say thank you, Lord, for that. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that's actually quite good. That's a good one. Sometimes, you, as in someone asking you to just read is, and then you going back to actually look at what, what he, that, that scripture has said. You know, they, they said that there's a scripture in the Bible says, uh, talks about the Berean Christians. These are Christians that were from Berea. When they go to church, they'll hear everything that Paul has been preaching, but they will go back and they'll go and check for themselves whether what Paul said was actually accurate. And it's the same thing with us. You know, you read the scripture and you're not like, what does this thing mean? You know, we have been talking about worship. So somebody went and went, went to, okay, when was the first place that worship was meant? Was said, where are the other places that, who are the people that have worshipped? How did they express their worship? What? So those are the, that, that's studying. So you're going, you're going back to the scripture. Remember, the scripture is explaining the scripture. The scripture is the, um, is the inspired word of God. It is a living living word is a living word you know where 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 i used to work there's this thing called them um, we call it commitments and i used to tell them that this is a living document it changes you know to 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 fit your circumstance as in and is the same thing in a way with the word of god the word of god does not change but you know, you read that one scripture, and at that time you're like, um, rejoice, oh ye, um, whatever, whatever. And then, but another time when you read that same rejoice, it's, it comes as, it's as if it's as, as if it's meeting you at that point of your need. It comes as, as if it's something totally different. And you're like, ah, it's not the same scripture that I was reading. So sometimes, you know, you just take the scripture, just like, mm, I'm not going to move from this simple. Lord, our God wants to expound the scripture to us so that we understand even more. So as in. The, this is what we're talking about is apologetics and being an apologetic means is a word that comes from a greek word that means to give a defense for those of us that are into law that's probably and for those of us that like you know arguing and discussing this thing so christian apologetics is the science of giving a defense of the christian faith there are many skeptics who doubt the existence of god or they attack the belief of god or the bible or the inspiration of the word of god or the fact that it's, the word of god does not move um ah thank you very much i'll go there and you know so that's so especially now especially now now is a really really good time for us to really know what the word of god says um godfred has said um explain the difference between reading and studying it says reading creates awareness and studying gives understanding thank you so much that is i want to write it to put it on a t-shirt <laughs> that is really good Reading creates awareness. When you are aware that that scripture is, when you study it, study to show yourself approved. You know, you study. It's not just reading the word of God. So some of us have stopped in the level of reading, but some of us need to study. Sometimes it might just be just one scripture, one verse, and you're going into it and you're digging it and you're like, I want to get as much from this scripture because it really, really like, um, touches you at that time where you are, you're in. You know, so that is how. And then when people come and ask you questions, why do you believe what you believe? You know, why do you believe that God exists? You don't just say, oh, I just feel it in my bones. You know, you can say, this is the reason why I believe it. This is why, why I believe God exists. This is why I believe that, you know, 
um, the, the sin is there. This is why I believe that of the, the authority of the word of God. In fact, I'm going to use this opportunity. Let me see if I put it there. Uh, ah, I did. Praise God. So uh, for that reading, these are people that are current, well, I mean, modern day apologetics. Um, I just use the ones that I remember off, off the top of my head. If you listen to them, they're on YouTube. They're on... Um, I say YouTube, yes. They're on YouTube. You can, if you're the kind of person that likes to listen, I like listening. So I, I play this. I don't need to see the video or anything. It will just be playing in the background. And I'll be listening. I'm a radio person. There are some people that actually like reading and there's something like watching. So maybe you, you learn by observing. So maybe you have to watch it on YouTube. You have to read. They have books. Tim Keller, um, God bless him. He's, he's with his, with his heavenly father. Rabbi Zachariah is also with, but I believe, with God. His father, C.S. Lewis, I believe also. C.S. Lewis, one of the best books that you can read from him is called Mere Christianity. You can also look for the audio book as well. And even people that have preached about Mere Christianity, it will explain to you why you're a Christian. You need to be able to, I wrote him quite twice. I must really love this guy. <laughs> John Lennox, I love John Lennox. Actually, it was my husband, Bray White, that actually introduced me to John Lennox. He's a scientist. And you know, especially now when, uh, people are always about science, science, and um, and uh, you know that science contradicts scripture. And by the time this man will explain to you how the Bible and science are, the, the Bible is the one that is hard. You just be like, oh my goodness, why am I not even thinking? So you don't need to know everything. Just understand that you don't know everything, but you know that. That's why the Word of God says that He has given us pastors, He has given us um, apostles, evangelists, teachers. And I've missed it. Prophets. He has given us those ones because to 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 bless us because you cannot know everything. So that these people have gone, they they they, they are critical thinkers. They've already done most of the thing. You just have to go and listen to them, and then you now go back to the Bible to check that what they have they themselves have said is the truth. Oh, they are saying this one. So you go back and say, hmm, this is true. And you know sometimes when you're listening to them, and Holy Holy Spirit to be like, yes, that is exactly right. That is exactly right. I stop. Lee Strobel, he's the one that did um the one about the case for Christ. I read that book. I read we read it again. I read a lot of books. Um, yes, I'm a reader. So <laughs> I read a lot of books. I read Lee Strobel's book about a case for Christ that he has written. He was a journalist. And so, like I'll say, John Lennox has also debated. You can listen to their debates as well. He has debated some of the um, um biggest um what they call these people now, atheists in, um, in, in the world. They, he has debated them. And you know, when you're listening to the debate, you're like, ha, ah. oh my gosh. So um, what's his name? Darwin, he has debated against Darwin. And this other, this guy, what's that guy that talked about God, that God does not exist? I can't remember. I can't remember his name. Um, R.C. Sproul, he, his books, I've listened more to him on, on his more of his audio books and read a few of his books. So these are just some of them that I know. There are probably some that you yourself you know. And you can put them in the comment section um, comment section and just explain and just type it out like, oh, this person have I've read this person's books or I've listened to this person and he's an apologetic. So it's somebody that defends the Christian faith, you know, and I just put some YouTube channels if you if you want to listen to that and so you have to study be ready to explain and if you don't understand just say oh you know what i don't know right now but i, I can go back and i'll study and i'll come back to you i'll come back to you with that you know because <laughs> don't go and don't go and form something sometimes holy spirit will give you inspiration but if you don't know and everything don't go and give somebody the wrong information and then the person will now build their foundation on a wrong found and um, build their faith on a wrong foundation for example, and I don't know why this one is still coming to me, God loves everybody, and that is true. He will never send anybody to hell if he truly loves, he's a true, true loving God. The word of God says that he does not want to send anybody to hell. He wants everybody to be saved, but he has given people a choice. Last Sunday we spoke about it, and the word, the word was resonating in my spirit it, i kept on saying throughout the week in camp you have a choice you have a choice don't let the devil deceive you and tell you that you have no choice in camp you have a choice you can choose you this day if you want to continue to remain angry and bitter and um and 
and um, unforgiving that you can choose, as in that's the word that I received last week, and I kept saying it to myself, you can't can choose. Yeah. Whoever Ayo is, you can say what you want to say. Okay, maybe just move to a different room. I think you're in comfort. I was move to a different room and then say what you want to say. I'll give you the time. So just unmute again, move to a different room and say what you want to say. And so you we have to be ourselves, have to I uh, was saying something that was quite important. I can't remember what it is. But okay, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. So you have a choice to actually believe what the word, and that's what the word of God says. So when he says that, when they say, oh, he cannot send anybody to hell, that is not true. He says that he's a just God. See, there's a court in heaven and he's the judge. If somebody comes, the accuser of the brethren comes and says, this person has done something wrong. And the person that is supposed to stand for you, who is Jesus, you have not accepted that person as your advocate, as your lawyer. Then you are now trying to defend yourself. You're losing that case because God will not even listen to your case because you don't have a case at all. So that's the thing. And then at the end of the day, when the judgment comes, which you have already, the person has already been judged ahead of time because you already, not you, but the person has already sinned and the person has already been judged and the person is already on the way, on their way to hell. And you now have an advocate that will say, let me advocate for you on the court, in the courts of heaven. Let me be the one that will stand in your place. Let me be the one that will tell you that I've taken the price of your sin. Let me be the one. And then you now say, no, I reject that. You have rejected, that person has rejected God. You know, let me be the one that will help you to forgive. Let me be the one that will help you to, and you hold on to your own thoughts and be like, I am right. It's my right. It's my whatever. You cannot even be treating me like that. When you go back to the scripture, you realize that Jesus did not, they treated Jesus like rubbish. They treated all the other apostles like rubbish. It's not a, being treated, whatever, is not an issue. That's why God, Jesus himself said, if somebody hurts you, forgive them how many times? How many times are you meant to forgive people? In a day. How many times are you meant to forgive the same person? In a day. Because, you know, there was a day I was trying to count how many times I forgive. I was forgiving somebody I, I particularly lived with. <laughs> I didn't get to the 490, 470 times, 70 times 7. Thank you. 70 times 7. Thank you, Dockers. So, yes. Yeah, so, that's, that's the, this is 490 times for one person in a day. And then you now restart again the next day. Do you, do you know why you're restarting? Because the message of God are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He starts again. Do, if God himself can forgive you every single this and then he, re, then he restarts, he started again the new the new day. Then you too, as, as somebody that's in the image of God, do you know how, as in, how I'm already apologetically telling you how, why you should forgive? Why you should forgive? So those are the kind of things. Study. People, so I've given examples, and don't be rude or disrespectful. You know, sometimes when you, it seems as if you know something, you now come, da, 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 you're now shouting, you're not like, you don't know what you're not even like. Please, can we be cautious? The, I'll read it again, the, what, what it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, and I'm going to read it in Amplified. It says, always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you, and do it courteously and respectfully don't be rude it's not about winning a debate it's about winning a soul it's about winning a soul and that's what you know the football our football says that it's about winning souls it's not about winning a game it's about winning souls so let us pray lord we have created me the zeal to defend the christian faith when the need arises wisely and pers persuasively help me to be able to know what your word says let me learn learn in the name of Jesus, study your word. Let me study your word. So I'll be able to defend in Jesus' name. Yes. So for that.